Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of an open and honest conversation about homeschooling. So I'm excited for today's episode. We're going to be talking a little bit about um, homeschooling year round versus following like a typical school year calendar, how the moms decide on that um, and what that looks like for their families. And then um, a really interesting thing that we'll be talking about is like the big question, do you get exhausted by spending 24 seven with your kids or do you wish that you had that kind of typical break that like sending them to an in-person public or private school would provide you during the day so be sure to listen in on that it's a very very interesting they they just gave a lot of very interesting answers on that one um so as I do in previous episodes. Um, all of the topics of conversation can be found timestamped in the video description below. So you can jump straight to a talking point if you want to hear that in particular. Um, otherwise, hope you guys enjoy. And at the end of this episode, you will see a quick sneak peek into some of the things that we'll be discussing in the next episode. Enjoy. Ladies, so do you guys homeschool year round or do you take breaks? And then how do you determine what your school year looks like? Year round. Year round. Year round. I'm just doing the school year. We start in April. We end, or we start in August and we end in April traditionally. September-ish, and end in June. Okay. And totally on the so holidays. So how does that, how do you all determine that? Like, is it just what works best for you guys so that you don't have to, like you said, start and stop? I or heard. do you kind of like the break in between where you don't have to think about it? Or? I personally like the break. Um, our family traditionally has gone on vacation every year in May. Um, we're kind of locked into a time frame where we like to go. And we are gone from May 15th to the end of the month. And so, and then we will go on a building trip with our church, uh, a mission, you know, mission trip. So, so we had those two activities that were almost back to back. And so, we were just done at the end of April because we needed that time at the beginning of May to prepare to leave because when we go, again, we own a corporation. We That has to come with us, mm -hmm. you know. And so it just worked for our family. And we like to do fun stuff in the summer. We would go sure. for a cave tour. Or we would go, you know, here or there or whatever. Which I would argue is still school. It's school. absolutely it's still school, <laughs> but as far as traditional school, our school has always been August to April. Hmm. So I do year-round school. Um, the biggest reason for that is I feel like it translates better to being an adult. I don't hmm. get days off. I get sporadic days off, but I certainly don't get three months off. Wow. So I was very good at school. I, I went to public school, I was really good at it. And then there was that idea of going to college, which I also would have been very good at. I had one year that I went to college and it was begrudging, but that was because I didn't have a drive or a purpose. So for me, I recognized that no other profession other than teaching or some form of education base allows for a three-month break yeah. where you get to do whatever you want. Maybe shrimp milk. Maybe. 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 Very few professions. Yeah, very few. Few I found that once I entered the adult world and uh, the working world, you didn't get those nice long breaks. You didn't get the beginning, the middle, the end. It was more of wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, mm. rinse, repeat. And so for me, it was important to me that the kids understood that there's not going to be a blue ribbon at the end of every single day. There's not going to be an achievement award. The award is the education itself. The award is the knowledge that you got and the recognition that learning doesn't stop even if it's July and it's the dead of summer mm -hmm. and it's hot. <laughs> I love the idea of night school in the middle of the summer because we do change activities, mm -hmm. yeah. but learning always is happening. Learning is always occurring, mm -hmm. and we keep journals and we take yeah. notes, and it's we develop breaks throughout the year, yeah. honestly based on being ill, or your family has come, <laughs> or everybody's having a rough week. Mm -hmm. yeah. We take therapy breaks in our house, like mm -hmm. especially when things are weird. 
COVID came, COVID made our life harder. It just did. I had a bunch of kids that didn't understand why they couldn't do the things they'd always done. Why now they're being asked to do things they've never done before. When I moved, we left everyone and everything. And some days reading two sentences was more than they could handle. And all of us would just end up in this puddle of tears and chocolate. And yeah. <laughs> we would just huddle together and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is rough, but we're going to get through it. Yeah. And tomorrow's a new day. But today we're in a puddle of tears and chocolate. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. we're going to take a break today. Mm -hmm. So our breaks are really determined again in a really organic way. What do we need today? Mm -hmm. What do we need this week? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in some facets, because I work, um, my children really commit to the schedule and they do that schedule yeah. just yeah. every hour there is something that they're supposed to be doing and you commit to that because it creates less friction mm -hmm. so especially when I'm not around as much you know my husband might be there um, but it's different because I'm the facilitator mm -hmm. so we break as we need to we break as makes sense for us, but the recognition that the mentality of learning never stops and we never entirely check out. And ours so. is pure chaos because... <laughs> <laughs> so, to explain, one of the jobs I do part-time is an editor for a physician's magazine. So I have set goals and deadlines when I have to meet them. But legitimately, 24-7, any hour of any day prior to that, I can be doing the work in whatever order I want, whatever works best for me. If it's 15 minutes today, three hours tomorrow, I can do that. Yeah. There's a lot of jobs like that now, a lot of gig jobs. So I want my kids to understand how to budget their time. So every day you get up in the morning, part of their school assignment is, how am I budgeting my time today? What do I need to do today? And I don't care what day of the week it is. If you want to stay up till four in the morning, working on what you're working on, mm -hmm. okay, but I need you to get your chores done tomorrow. <coughs> so you need to budget your time and get yourself ready, which may not be something taught in a normal school, but will certainly serve them the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and yeah. that's what we're doing is we're setting them up for success Yeah, and the ability to transition into adulthood in a seamless way. Yes. It's important to remember that we're not raising children, we're raising adults. Mm -hmm. Yep. With some of my son's internships um, and such, you know, they're having to build compost bins or like he's helping work on a tree farm. So then they're trying to make up plans on what type of tree they're going to plant, you know, where they're going to buy them from, the and cost the and logistics, of the lifetime, how long it's going to take. They have um, this tree farm in Littleton that the trees were not properly taken care of for two or three years. Mm -hmm. So trying to rescue them, and then they decided, well, we have to cut and trim certain trees a certain amount, so they made wreaths. So then they had to come up with a plan on where yep. they were going to sell the wreaths. The consequences, for sure. <laughs> so they end up spending a weekend down in Boston <laughs> selling Christmas tree Christmas oh, wreaths. Brilliant! And my yeah. son was dressed as Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa hair. The hair. <laughs> the hair <laughs> <laughs> The whole That's suit, awesome. the beard, the spectacles, yeah. and everything, oh, and then cool. I made him a Father Christmas coat to put over yes. that. But you know, um, building, you know, going from there, and still working on a plan how to um, redo this Christmas farm uh, coming spring. And so part of his internship, he has to do reports and send them to his boss, so he gets paid. So he <laughs> what he does. Yeah, there you, go. <laughs> you know, so. He can tell you all, you know, how high you have to cut the the branches on the tree from the ground, oh, to uh, how to perfect. trim them, yeah, so you yeah. can start reshaping them and try to redo them. And some, you just have to cut them down because they're mm -hmm. too far too gone, far you yeah. know. But so he's, you know, got all this stuff that he's, well, mom, this and that, you know. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Isn't but, that you the know, best part? When they tell you something, you were like <laughs> some random fact. Because like we went deep sea fishing and my daughter looks at me before we get on the boat. She goes, Mom, we might see orcas today. I'm like, this is Maine. Why would we see orcas? Honey, why would... She goes, well, 
Do you know that orcas have a breeding season where they come up to the coast of Maine and you can see them off the coast of Maine at this certain time of year. We just happen to be here the week that the orcas might be here. And I'm going, okay. <laughs> yes, just like ice fishing. I do too. I do too. I'm a personal tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You set Thank your you lines when you're ice fishing for the type of fish you want. You put them down X amount if you want salmon, if you want togue, or if you want pike. There's different levels mm -hmm. and yeah. times when fish we move. Yeah, and bite. Yeah. So, you know, he's learning all this biological. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you all. He is getting a very well rounded education. Yes. Yeah. You know, how much he ice is. and all that kind what? of stuff. He's, so, he's crazy. The education I, in the conversations we had, with him, what I had with him when he was in my class, like, he, you know, the indigenous education and, you know, explaining the different nations to me. And I was like, I, I was dumbfounded as an adult that, I, one, I've never learned this information in the public school system. Mm -hmm. And how well he understood and articulated that to an adult that I could understand this. This was not a child telling you this information, right? right? He's an extremely sharp young man. I was like, I have so much to learn. <laughs> Just keep talking. <laughs> I understand now as an adult, my dad never used to let us do like sleepovers. Mm -hmm. It's like we were a package deal with family, you know. Wherever they went, we went wherever. So I've done the same with my son, only because, well, being the dual parent and not wanting to leave him, yeah. you know, working 40 plus hours, I mean, working at the jail, all kinds of shifts, four shifts, this, that, and the other. I would take him wherever I went, to different conferences, I mean, uh, when I changed career, I had, I was allowed to take my son as long as I paid for his mm -hmm. um, meals and airline ticket. And they had youth uh, speakers at this um, conference that I went to on sex trafficking in Indian country. Mm -hmm. And you know, he was 16, 17 at the time, you know. We need to get our youth involved in everything and yeah. some of the the organizers from the Department of Justice who fund our grants were like, yes, bring him in. We want our youth input, you know. I want to see you at every yeah. conference your mom comes to, you know. Yeah. And he's like, great, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> he's signing up for these things, Mom. <laughs> I've even taken him. I've been, had gracious people who have even allowed him to, like, do unarmed self-defense, you know. He's been my person that I've mm -hmm. taught there when I worked at the jail and taught those kind of things. You know, he was my... Person to throw around yeah. <laughs> and kind of stuff. So he's always gone and done and now adultish he's big things and with scary me. Scary and can throw anyone else around if he wants not to. Scary. You have not seen his scary face yet. No, <laughs> I don't think anybody's <laughs> really seen a scary face. I was like, nope. I'm just gonna walk away. <laughs> walk away. Okay. Um, <coughs> big question that I got from Instagram actually. Do you ladies ever get exhausted by being with the kids 24 seven and not getting that break that sending them to like a traditional public or private school would provide during the day? Are you a parent? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't think it's fair saying it that way because it's not necessarily a break like you're with your kid 24 seven. It's the like uninterrupted. No, 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 not even that. It's I have to do uh, five people's things. worth of dishes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So <laughs> they were at a public school. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. What do you have to do? Or um, yeah. they play dress up today, so I have 50 <laughs> outfits to wash. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that you play dress up, but holy crap, you put it on, took it off, put it back in the closet. <laughs> you know. Can I also say Ooh. when COVID first happened? and there were the bread shortages and the toilet paper shortages. I was like, hey, guess what? The difference between now and summer break is that they didn't know to order more. So this is what happens when everybody's home. What do you feed kids? You feed them sandwiches. Where's everybody going to the bathroom? Because they're not going to the office and right? they're not going to school. Exactly. They're, they're going home. at home. Yeah. Yep. That's where your shortages came from because everybody was home. Yes. The industrial stuff still had all of their, their supplies in their cabinet. They knew. But now yeah. you're all home and you clean that bathroom twice a day and you do the dishes three times a day at least. And I make three meals and one snack. 
And they're every playing day. outside every day. So you're every like, day. I cleaned that floor 30 seconds ago. What and is now that? Like, I, I am the janitor. I am the administrator. Yeah. I am the teacher. And I am the principal. And I'm the aide. Yeah. <laughs> so it's and just, the janitor. And the nurse. <laughs> and the nurse. And doing all of that, I'm still doing, I'm answering the phone. I'm still answering phone. Phone. I'm, working. I'm working. I'm writing payroll. So, I'm hi, doing this. Kim, how can I help you? <laughs> Yes, we yeah. yes I'm iron. happy to send your order out tomorrow. Can you excuse me for a moment? If you do not put the game on your brother, I'm going to whoop your butt when we're done. <laughs> yes, yes, sweetheart. We'll get that right on the truck for you. I am not playing Candy Crush. I am answering 19 emails right now. Yes. Leave me alone. <laughs> what my favorite is, like, you have to learn to just say okay and repeat yourself a hundred times. requires like thing for marriage or <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't even yeah. need kids in the home for no, that. No, no. Yeah. But you're like, oh, can you please pick that up? Turn around five minutes later. Can you oh, please pick that up? <laughs> okay, we're gonna play a game right now and you're gonna pick that up. Oh, pick a game. Okay, if you say go <laughs> pick that up, they're gonna cry. <laughs> Some of these things. Now, yes, of course, I have I not. Am. I have not cured everything. There is. But yeah, the yeah. things that I will do is, I ask you to pick up the no, socks. So here's my sock drawer. Dump it out on the floor. Now I'm going to require that you pick up my socks as well. <laughs> pick them up, all of them, and put them in the drawer, nice and neat. So I had to learn to let go. So if my kids would not pick up their toys, their toys went in the garbage bag, and I had to go, it's just money. And I would throw them it's away. It's just money. And oh, after, the fourth, uh, after the fourth time, I went, this is getting easier. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's less clutter now, and uh, that seems like a trick that my mother pulled. <laughs> that was that, you know? It's like you're subliminally like paying for like maid services or something. Mm -hmm. You're yes. like, I paid for this. <clears throat> But now, the only like, time, I feel like the yeah. space is cleaner, like we're, you know, we're... Yeah, yeah. I, I have found that generally, my children, if, if I get them to take, to feel, to understand how it feels for someone to have to pick up after them, then they kind of, it kind of clicks a little bit. So, okay, I've had to clean your room when they were little. I've had to clean your room and it's not my job to clean your room. So I want you to come and clean my room. Or I, like I want, I want you to clean, your sister's, <laughs> yeah. clean yeah. Yeah. your sister's room. I want you to clean your sister's room because you need to understand how it feels for someone to have to come in and clean up after you. So now that But Ooh. even with that, even with that, Ooh. when the kids are little too. It's embarrassing on both sides. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't want you to clean see my stuff. <laughs> so clean up, clean yeah. up after yourself. But when they're little, I never required my kids to just go in and clean. Right. Yeah. I would say, I want you to go in and I want you to pick up all the Barbies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just pick right. up yeah. the Barbies. The little and then come and tell me. Or I want you to go in and pick up all the books and come tell me when you're done. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, okay, you picked up the books. Good job. You picked up all the books. Now I want you to go in and pick up all the Legos. Or the and socks. then come and see me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So don't, make, don't make the mistake of, oh, your sister wants to clean your room for you, so you offered to pay her $20. Which is what my kids do now that they have money that they're earning. So do we not? <laughs> no, no. So I'm just saying I have how yes, many years So now they don't pick up after themselves. They ask each other how much it's worth. I like this. This is a fair trade conversation. It's <laughs> yes. assessment of value. Yes. Yeah. Skilled bargaining. Until they go, Mom. I would like this for dinner. How much is that going to cost? And I will go in the grocery store for you with my money and I will buy all of the ingredients. And then what else fine. do you need? This is also fine. And so Mara goes it's into really the fun. grocery <laughs> store <laughs> one day with her own money, gets all of her stuff. I said, Mara, can you get me a daikon radish while you're in there? That's what I would like for making you whatever for dinner. She That's going to be $3. <laughs> well, she, she gets to the register. She didn't have enough to pay for the radish. And I was like, okay, we couldn't get it. Well, she comes out, and this woman comes running out of the grocery store after her, carrying the radish, because this little 12-year-old is in there shopping <laughs> for herself, and all she wanted 
was a radish and had to give it back. So the woman comes out and hands her the radish and I said, I'm sorry, I wish you hadn't done that. She needs to understand if she can't afford it, she can't get it. Yeah. Right. And the woman was devastated. Like, I was a horrible mother. <laughs> she goes, it's a radish. <laughs> like, it the next all. time it'll be it's chocolate or, or a dress. Or a, yeah. yeah. We've all been at the register and gone, maybe I don't really need this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Especially well, when it does, it does translate to, you know, especially as a young adult, oh, well, let's see, am I going to be able to go out with my friends this weekend or maybe pay my life bill? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. We have to yeah, because, I mean, this is, life's about decisions. Yes. You know, Absolutely. it's like, or am I eating ramen for five days or do I yes. have one steak and don't eat for six days? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> ramen. <laughs> am I gonna have a pack of cigarettes or am I gonna eat? Yes, ah, yes. Yeah. please mm. choose eating. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarettes make you feel like you don't want to eat, so <laughs> don't do that if you're watching Horrible this video life. badly. It's a bad, bad life decision. decision. Bad life choice. Hence why it's not what we do as adults. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs>